Welcome to Chauvet, dated between 33,000 and 31,000 years before the present. The Chauvet Cave is located in the Ardèche region of southern France, and it houses impeccably preserved, exquisite examples of prehistoric art. Now reliably dated to between 33,000 and 30,000 years ago, the numerous and diverse animals that dot the interior walls of the cave, both painted and engraved, show such high artistic quality that they were initially thought to have been closer in age to a similarly stunning but much younger uh, cave known as the Lascaux Cave, and we'll look at that in a few slides. Its age and artistry have made archaeologists reconsider the story of art, as well as the capabilities of these humans. Typical of most cave art, there are no paintings of complete human figures. There are a few panels of red ochre um, that have handprints and hand stencils, which are made by blowing pigment over hands pressed against the cave surface. Abstract markings, lines, and dots are found throughout the cave. There are also two unidentifiable images that have a vaguely butterfly or bird-like shape to them. This combination of subjects has led some students of prehistoric art and culture to believe that there was a ritual, shamanic, or magical aspect to these paintings. Still with the Orignac, the lowest, and in prehistoric art, the terms Orignacian describes the very earliest period of the Neolithic, uh, which coincided with the entry, as I've mentioned, of anatomically modern humans into Europe and the progressive disappearance of the indigenous Neanderthals, Homo neanderthalensis. The oldest layer with dark sediments and artifacts is attributed to early human occupation, about 35,000 years before the present, during which time this site served as a shelter and permanent camp. Also from the Orignac, as you've seen, their bone flute, there were also bone whistles. This is the Lion Man figure. The Löwenmensch figure, or Lion Man figure, of Holenstein Stadel is a prehistoric ivory sculpture discovered in the Holenstein Stadel, a German cave, in 1939. The German name Löwenmensch, meaning lion human, is used most frequently, frequently for this figurine because it was both discovered and is exhibited in Germany. I want to move now to Maros on the island of Sulawesi in Indonesia. Twelve human hand stencils and two figurative animal depictions from seven cave sites in the Maros karsts of Sulawesi um, show that rock art traditions on this Indonesian island are at least compatible in age with the oldest European art. The earliest dated image from Maros with a minimum age of 39,900 years before the present is now the oldest known hand stencil in the world. Handprints are the most common type of images in Maros on Sulawesi. Quote, the practice asserts World Cave Art Specialist Dave Williams was not so much to make a picture of a hand, kind of an I was here representation, but rather to make contact with the spiritual realm and its power. Adjacent or next to the oldest known hand stencil is the now faint drawing of a babirusa, a pig deer, that Obear, one of the archaeologists, 
has dated to 35,400 years before the present, near the time of the oldest figurative cave art in Western Europe. This archaeologist drawing shows the babirusa, the hand print, flaked off or exfoliated areas, as well as dozens of dot-like calcite accretions known as cave popcorn, or more scientifically, coralloid speleotherms. Chauvet. Hundreds of animal paintings have been cataloged here, depicting at least 13 different species, including some rarely or never found in other Ice Age paintings. Rather than depicting only the familiar herbivores that predominate in Paleolithic cave art, things like horses, aurochs, mammoths, the walls of the Chauvet Cave feature many predatory animals, for example, cave lions, panthers, bears, and cave hyenas. There's also paintings of rhinoceros in the Still at the Chauvet Cave, the artists who produced these paintings use techniques rarely found in other cave art. Many of these paintings appear to have been made only after the walls were scraped clear of degree, debris and concretions, leaving a smoother and noticeably lighter area upon which the artists worked. Similarly, a three-dimensional quality and the suggestion of movement are achieved by incising or etching around the outlines of certain figures. The art is also exceptional for its time for including, quote, scenes, example, um, animals interacting with each other. A pair of woolly rhinoceros, for example, are seen butting horns in an apparent contest for territory or mating rights. Altamira, Spain between 50,000 and 10,000 years before the present. The Altamira Caves contain paintings which serve as evidence for the habitation of the Magdalenian people thousands of years ago. Alive between 50,000 and 10,000 years before the present, during the third and last subdivision of the Stone Age, also known as the Upper Paleolithic or Neolithic period, the Magdalenian people were hunters of reindeer, red deer, uh, horse. They were also tool makers and artists. The Altamira Caves, located in the mountains of northern Spain, and the paintings were discovered by architect Don Marcelino. Due to their sheltered position away from wind and water, the paintings have remained virtually unscathed and undamaged over the years. Besides the paintings, the Altamira Caves contain further evidence of human habitation, such as the remains of food, fire pits, and tools. Most of the paintings that can be found in the caves at Altamira focus on the image of the bison. This may be because it was an important animal for hunting. Besides being a nutritional source, bisons were also used for their fur and skin, which could be used to make clothes and shoes. Additionally, its bones could be used in the constructions of tools, some of which remain intact today. In some paintings, bisons, deers, and wild boars can all be seen together in the same scene. This is strange because these types of animals usually are never seen in the same place at the same time. We're moving to France and the Lascaux Caves. The Chinese horse is a painting found in the Lascaux Caves in France. The colors used on the horse are brown, white, and black. The colors of the background scene are brown, gray, white, and red. There are two main components of the painting, which are the horse and two red arrows that seem to be falling below the horse. The arrows are painted at an angle to the horse and seem to be shot from the right side of the painting. The painting of the horse does not look like a normal horse, though. It has a rather small head, short legs, and a large sagging stomach. 
since the painting is on a cave wall the texture is that of a cave that is both rough and curved the horse is painted with curved lines whereas the arrows are painted with straight lines the hair hooves and outlines of the horse are painted with black curved lines the hair has two triangle shaped pieces that are shown on the side of the horse the upper part of the horse's body is painted a brown color and the lower part is a white color there are four short straight red lines above the horse's head in the scene surrounding the horse there are brown and white splotches of color beneath the horse there are many brown and white curved lines that depict the brown uh, the ground the brown splotches above the horse are painted in very curved lines that almost look like leaves there are two lines coming from the back of the horse that resemble tails one is straight and pointed straight upwards the other is curved and pointing downwards which is more likely the tail of the horse an interesting note to make about the horse is that it is outlined thickly in black on its lower half but only very lightly on its upper half this is the venus of willendorf who which was discovered on august 7th 1908 by a workman during the excavations conducted by archaeologist joseph strombathy and at a paleolithic site near willendorf a village in lower austria it is carved from Uthlitic limestone that is not local to the area and it's tinted with red ochre the figure is believed to have been carved during the neolithic or upper paleolithic period a period of prehistory starting around 30,000 years before um, today before the present a wide variety of dates have been proposed initially um, the figurine was dated at about 20,000 years before present but the most recent scientific testing has pushed the date of this figurine back to 30,000 years before Stonehenge is a unique prehistoric monument lying at the center of an outstandingly rich archaeological landscape an extraordinary source for the study of prehistory it holds a pivotal pivotal place in the development of archaeology many different theories have been put forward about who built it when and why although it's generally agreed that it was built about 5100 years before the present Stonehenge is the most architecturally sophisticated and only surviving lintel stone circle in the world the early stage of the monument is one of the largest cremation cemeteries known in neolithic britain the stones were brought from very long distances the blue stones from Purcelli hills over 150 miles away and the sarsens probably from the marlborough downs 19 miles to the north of the site in 2008 two excavations within the stone circle took place one with the aim of investigating the early bluestone settings and another to retrieve cremation burials from aubrey hole these targeted research excavations were both part of wider excavations into stonehenge its stones and its landscape the bluestone circuit excavations were part of the spaces project which stands for strumbrel Procelli ancient communities and environmental study which has included field work in the Procelli hills and geological analysis of the bluestones the aubrey hole excavations were part of the much larger stonehenge riverside project which ran from 2005 to 2009 which excluded excavations at several monuments in the Stonehenge landscape including the Stonehenge Cursus, Durrington Walls, West Amesbury and the Avenue. In architecture post and lintel also called prop and lintel or trabiated systems 
is a building system where strong horizontal elements are held up by strong vertical elements with large spaces between them. This is usually used to hold up a roof, creating a largely open space beneath for whatever use the building is designed for. The horizontal elements are called by a variety of names, including lintels, headers, architraves, or beams, and the supporting vertical elements may be called columns, pillars, or posts. The use of wider elements at the top of the post, called capitals, help spread the load and are common in many traditions. Here you see a close-up of some lintels at Stonehenge that give you a little bit better idea of how parts of the monument were constructed.